molecular geometry. So Lewis structures are the way we draw covalent um, molecules. And a Lewis structure just indicates the shape of molecules by showing the bonding of valence electrons. So on the periodic table, you know you have, uh, it tells you your valence electrons by the group number 1A, 2A. Well, that, that's how you know how many valence electrons it has, but then you indicate it with a dot. So carbon, oops, carbon has four valence electrons, so you would put four dots around carbon. So here are the rules for drawing molecules. You want to add up all your valence electrons from all the atoms in the compound, form bonds between the center atom and the outer atom, and then distribute the remaining electrons to satisfy the octet rule. And the octet rule says everybody wants eight valence electrons so that they're like the noble gases and they're in a stable state. Ions. If you're drawing a Lewis structure for ions, it, the number of electrons has to equal the charge. So if you have a negative charge, you need to add those to your total sum. If the charge of the ion is positive, then you need to subtract those from the sum. Resonance. Sometimes you can have more than one Lewis structure. So here, I put the double bond on that oxygen, but I could have put it here, or I could have put it here. So that, that, that's what resonance is. It's just where you put the double bond. And you have to have a multiple bond in order to have resonance. Dipoles. So if you have a polar molecule, you have a dipole moment. So um, hydrogen and oxygen have different electronegativities. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so we draw an arrow pointing to where the electrons hang out at, and then a little plus sign over here because hydrogen is partially positive and oxygen is partially negative. Here, the electrons are really going to hang out around fluorine because fluorine is very electronegative. So these two molecules would be polar. Here, although carbon is less electronegative than oxygen, it has two dipole moments. Since they're in equal and opposite um, directions, overall, this molecule is nonpolar because they cancel each other out. So again, polar or nonpolar, look and see what's around your molecule. If everything around the molecule is exactly the same, then it's nonpolar. If everything around this molecule isn't, so you have a lone pair and three hydrogens, they're not all exactly the same, that means it's polar. Formal charge. So there's different ways you can draw molecules and not all of them actually exist. And so to figure out which is the best structure, you have to calculate formal charge. And this is the equation to calculate formal charge. And you would do this for each atom. I'm just gonna do it for nitrogen to save time and we'll practice in class. So nitrogen has five valence electrons minus half of the bonding electrons and each line represents two electrons. So one, so there's two, four, six, eight here, but half of that is four minus lone electrons, it has no lone pairs around it, so zero. So five minus four is one. You really want your formal charge to be as close to zero as possible. So I would probably move this double bond around and see if there's a better structure that I could draw for this and calculate my formal charge and see if I can get one close, closer to zero, if, if not zero. You definitely never want it to be negative unless it's on an oxygen or a really electronegative atom, and then it would be okay. So there are some exceptions to the octet rule. Most everybody wants eight electrons, but not hydrogen. He only wants two, right? That's all he can hold. And not boron. He's happy with six. So then there's um, shapes. There's um, six different electron domains that y'all have to know. Um, and it's based on the Vesper theory, the valence shell electron pair repulsion. And basically what that is, is that when you have a lone pair, like if we had ammonia, it's not perfectly flat like this. This lone pair is actually really, really big. And what it does is it pushes these little hydrogens down and it kind of makes a pyramid. So this shape would be trigonal pyramidal <clears throat> instead of flat. Uh, 
like this one. This, this is not really how it's shaped. Y'all don't have to copy this down. I have a handout for you, um, but y'all are going to need to know a lot of this stuff, and, and I'll tell you in class which ones you need to know. All right, then we've got intermolecular forces, and these are the intermolecular, these are between molecules, not between atoms, okay? So we have our van der Waals forces, and these are very weak. London and dispersion is the weakest force, and these are between nonpolar covalent molecules. Dipole interactions are between polar covalent molecules, and then hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest, are between uh, covalent molecules that have a hydrogen attached. And it also must have an N, an O, or an F. If there's a hydrogen attached to, say, chlorine, that doesn't hydrogen bond. It has to be with an N, an O, or an F. And hydrogen bonding is the strongest, right? Because DNA, hydrogen bonds, you'd hope it'd be really strong, otherwise your DNA would fall apart. All right, y'all try and draw these, and we will check them in class.